Hello, and welcome to yet another Podcast Pontifications with me, Evo Terra. If you're watching this on video, well, it's a video. It's not a podcast. This is a video where I talk about podcasting. If you want the podcast, go to podcastpontifications.com, and you can subscribe right there. Today on the program, I would like to talk about eating your podcast. So I had the occasion this morning to read a guide that was written back in 2015. Ooh, why would I be talking about something from 2015 when it's almost 2019, Evo? That means it is at least three years old and quite possibly older than that because it takes time to publish things. Why is it still relevant, you might answer. Well, what it is, what it was that I read was Google's guide on how they measure quality content. Specifically, the guide they published, a 169-page guide, which I'll provide a link to it in the show notes. A 169-page guide that they give to their quality people, their quality assurance people, which are real humans, as they judge web content. Wouldn't that be the world's worst job or best job, whichever, how you want to look at it. Now, that's what this guide is. Now, we're not talking about SEO. That's not the topic of conversation today. But I do want to talk about kind of the main meat of that content. And it's something that the people in the SEO world have known for well, three years or so now. And it's this focus around EAT, E-A-T. But I want to talk about it in podcasting because this is a show about the future of podcasting. You know this, that's what I talk about. I talk about, I think about things. I, I extrapolate what the future might hold. And at some point in time, we're going to have to get better on finding ways to discover content. And that's a, a mixture of machine learning to figure that kind of stuff out, as well as human interactions. And I think that the best model we have currently on how do we determine whether something is a good piece of content or not is this concept of eat. So let me explain what eat means. Eat is three different letters, the three acronyms, E-A-T. E means expertise. Number two means authoritativeness. And then T means the light rail bit, no. Uh, and T means trustworthiness. So again, I'll read those again. Uh, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. And here's the deal, they all weave in together. And I think that podcasters, specifically most of my clients, business podcasters, can really win at this game if they take an eat approach to the content they produce on their podcast. Let me explain what I mean by an EAT approach. So that first E is expertise, which means, well, that's really simple. Are you, is your company an expert? Do you know that of which you speak? And now for individuals, it's really tough to prove or demonstrate expertise in an area because you're just a person, right? But as a business podcaster, you have expertise. Your business grants you, provides you a certain amount of expertise because the business does something that makes you an expert. It brands you as an expert. You are getting in commerce for this. You get money. People pay you money to do this businessy thing. Therefore, you automatically get a bonus in the E category. So, this gets ranked from lowest quality to highest quality, or high quality, medium quality. You definitely get in the high quality just because you're making content as an expert. Your business grants you that. The business that's associated with your podcast gives you a certain amount of expertise. Great. One E covered, a bonus thing for the business podcaster. The next is related to that, the A, authoritativeness relates to your expertise. You might be an expertise, but the A refers to, are you an authority in this thing we're talking about? So you might, for example, be a, and the example I saw in the Google document was, you might be a restaurant. You might have a business, you might have a podcast for your restaurant. However, if the content you're putting out on your podcast is about tax advice, uh, there's a mismatch. Now you're no longer granted 
that authority. You had the expertise, yeah, you got that one, but you might actually get dinged down because you are not an authority on that particular topic. It's not what your business does. Now, specifically where I've seen people get into trouble with this is they're an authority, they are an expert in something. Let's say they're an expert in digital marketing, for example, and they launch a podcast, uh, let's say, about train travel in Europe. You're an expert, but it's in digital marketing, so you lose the A because you're doing a show about train travel. There's not a match. So this has to do with the accuracy. How closely to the point did you do? Which is a negative for businesses. Sometimes it's tough to break out of that thing that you're known for to do something else. You might still be an expert, but you're not an expert in that thing. So E and the A. The T is trustworthiness, the last one. Now, trustworthiness is fungible. What does it actually mean? So as I've said before, ratings and reviews do not help with your algorithm inside of Apple Podcasts slash iTunes. And that's very true. It's not changing anytime real soon. However, ratings and reviews in general do contribute to your trustworthiness factor for your show. It actually does point and say, is this trustworthy? Have other people said things about it? So ratings and reviews are one thing. Links from the outside are another. Are authoritative people who are also experts linking back to you? That's a T. That's a trust. And again, I think businesses can have a, have a leg up on the independent podcaster because they have other trust that they can borrow from other associations, from other content they produce. It can all point back and say, does this, is this trustworthy? Have other people... And they can be regular users, or they can also be professionals in the industry or other trusted places. Do they trust the content from this site? And if so, we will. So that's the big rundown of EAT, but let me wrap it all up in a picture for you. You have to remember that when, when this is being evaluated for EAT, the, the, the evaluation is at an individual piece of content level. In Google's world, where this all came from, it has to do with a web page and how that web page relates to the larger website. The whole website isn't gauged on an EAT level. It, it's the individual content that is gauged and evaluated by the EAT level. So each content you have to produce has to match the EAT. It just can't be my website, nor can it be that way for your podcast. I'm not talking about your expertise and authority and trustworthiness of your overall show. I mean on an individual level, that's where this gets assigned, which means each and every episode you produce and all of the content you produce for that episode should hit high marks on the E's and the A's and the T. Expert, is it on point with what you're, and, and A together, is it the kind of thing that you should be talking about and is it trustworthy? for each individual episode. And if you do an episode that is not lined up, businesses, here's the big danger. If you do an episode that does not line up to the rest of your EAT, whoops, you can be pos potentially screwing up your score. Now, I need to back up and remind you that this, there's nobody gauging podcasts like this today. It's not happening today. So you got time. If you've done things in the past that didn't really fit they didn't want a perfect target. Think about getting rid of those. There's no reason you can't get rid of those. And I don't know that this is really the way that the content will be judged in the future, but it probably will be by, at least by Google, who now have Google Podcasts and have for a year and should start turning on the faucets for that anytime. When they start evaluating podcast content by EAT, I think it'll change things. I like to think a lot about the future of the podcasting world, especially for podcasts for businesses, because that's what I do. I launch podcasts for businesses. If you have a podcast and you need help getting your show launched and keeping it running for a long, long time, get in touch with me, evo at podcastlaunch.pro. Go to podcastlaunch.pro, find out more information about the services.